Scaling function practice like this is more effective. How to connect your technique to your playing. Getting inspired by my technique, yes, it's fun to be able to execute. I need more technique, yes, of course, but not for the sake of the technique. Do it for the sake of music. I believe that the goal with technical exercise is to practice great applicable material which is fitting directly into melodies and solos which you will be playing. And not to practice material we will not use on a daily basis. technique exercises to your play, show, play and analyze three jazz lines applying functional scale exercises. Hi, I'm Sam Bellegor and welcome to Sam Bellegor's saxophone lessons. Why is it important to connect your technique practice to musical functions? Learn the words of a language is important. More importantly is to learn how to make sense when speaking. Technique is important when you play an instrument, but you need to apply your technique to your playing. Your playing needs to make sense. What you play needs to have a function. Many people play a lot of technical exercises. Many people also have no connection between technique and what they are actually playing. Connect your technique practice with musical functions makes it easier to use your technique in your playing. When you practice your technique in this way, you're not only training your fingers, but also practicing how to add this directly into musical ideas. So play your technique, thinking about the musical function of your technique. What does it mean to connect your scales functions to your playing? Basically it means use your technique, practice exercises and make music with them. The challenge is to find out what you are practicing and how to use it. There is a part of realization in this process. Am I practicing material I can actually use? A good exercise which many musicians like to practice and are actually advising others to practice are thirds in the scale. Why would you practice this besides that many musicians all through the history of music have practiced this and it is advised by many teachers to practice this? Do you ever play long rows of thirds in any piece of music or any solo that you are playing? You get better in moving your fingers when practicing thirds. But you can also practice 2-5-1 licks and get faster fingers. Or just play a John Coltrane solo and get faster fingers. It makes sense when you put thirds into context, adding a function to the row of thirds. I modify the long row of thirds to make it a bit more melodic. <laughs> I'm hitting the important notes of the F major 7 on the important beats of the bar. And I would actually generally use this line to play F major 7 in an improvisation or a melody. The same applies for the second bar. I play 3 thirds up the F major scale. I'm beginning on the G, hitting the important notes of the G minor 7. I would call this a good jazz line on a G minor 7 chord. How do you practice your scale functions? Getting started on the F major scale was a kick off adding functions to all the steps of the scale. Let's look at the function and chord names of the major scale. So we have an F major. Here you have all the chords on each step in the major scale. Every chord has a musical function. Those functions are spelled out by using the target notes of the chord, so the chord notes. F major 7. On the second step, G minor 7. A minor on the third. B flat major on the fourth. C7 on the fifth. 
D minor 7 on the 6th. E hat diminished 7 on the 7th. We want our technical scale practice to spell these functions out because we want to learn the sound of each function. We want to learn the different ways to play these functions and we want to get better in our technique at the same time. All this without getting very difficult, long and tiring exercises. Our thirds in the scale example would look like this in an F major scale. Playing it musically, playing it into the functions. You can see that for every bar I'm playing the third pattern, I have applied the chord name. This is very important to have in your mind when you exercise this line. The exercise would sound like this. One, two, three. Exercise, I do have the chord name, so I'm playing this on this chord. Try to remember the chord names and also what you see here. Try to remember what step you're on and what function this is. This is a first step is a one major chord, the second step is a G minor chord, so a two minor chord, and so forth and so forth. Build functional technique exercises. We began with a full scale of thirds. To make this functional and more musical, I changed this into three thirds going up the scale. Why I did this? To get the target notes on the chords, on the important beats. This again brings up the functions of the chord we want to emphasize. The goal is to get more out of your technique practice by adding more functional exercise. In your technique practice, you will play exercises that are closer to what you actually would play in a melody or in a solo. Building an exercise example, we do use a lot of triads when we play melodies and when we play solos. And they certainly come in many forms. The normal triad exercise through the scale looks and sounds like this. One, two, three. <laughs> if you're playing groupings of three over a 4-4 four, four bar. But we are aiming for more mainstream applicable stuff. A simple add-on is a rest to each triad. Sounding like this. One, two, three. <laughs> on each chord, on the F minor, G minor, A minor, B flat and so on. If you want to make this exercise a little bit more interesting, we can use the 8 note rest in front of the triad, like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> to make the triad exercise more functional and also more exciting to play is a chromatic approach note in front of the first note of the triad. Sounding like this. One, two, three. In this way we get a great leading tone to the triad and makes it very interesting musically. Our main focus when we're building interesting and functional scale exercises is get the target notes in the right place. Make the exercise sound like music. Think the chords of the material what you are playing. Think the function of the music you are playing. Apply functional technique exercises to your playing. Going through a couple of exercises which I often hear being recommended which we can tweak a bit. The common exercises of the triad in the scale gives many options. We just saw how you can add a rest and a chromatic step in front of the triad. Taking the exercise a bit further, playing the triad down while going up the scale. At the same time, we can add the chromatic step before the first note. It looks like this and it sounds like this. One, two, three. <laughs> Remember to think 
your chords and your functions while you're playing this and then you'll also see that these lines fit over the chords you're playing. The exercise is very very applicable in your melodies and your solos. In the next chapter I'll give you an example on how you can add this to your jazz lines, how this fits into jazz lines. The seventh arpeggios in the scale are very useful as they are but also these we can tweak into a great sounding jazz exercise. I've taken the normal seventh arpeggio going up, tweaked the rhythm a little bit and added a scale down. <laughs> Another great way to adding arpeggios in your scale is adding chromatic steps in front of the chord. I've added a chromatic note in front of the chord, then I'm going down the scale, going down the arpeggio after this. One, two, three. <laughs> set up these scale exercises. I also think you would like my previous tutorial working out these materials. Making musical scale exercises which you are easy to apply in your music and your playing. Scale exercises, this is how to play music while practicing your scales. Check the link in the description. Show, play and analyze three jazz lines applying functional scale exercises. The purpose of scale exercises are that these should be really straightforward to apply directly into your playing. In the following jazz lines I'll give you examples on how you can directly use the exercises in these jazz lines so getting it right into your playing. Sample line number one using the chromatic step to the triads. <laughs> to the fifth. The pattern I repeat on the G minor, A minor and the B flat triad. In the second bar on the third beat I go to the approach note to G, the fifth of C7. I play up the C triad in the second inversion. In the third bar I repeat the chromatic approach note pattern to the ninth of the F major 9 chord. Then I play the F major arpeggio down and fill in the 13 and the ninth to get more, a more melodic line. Ending on the major 7th of the F major 7. Sample line number 2. A bit excess use of the arpeggio with added 16 note rhythms. To make use of this arpeggio is very clear. Going up the G minor 7 chord, adding the rhythm. Ending on the 7th, going down the arpeggio again, adding the 13th and the 9th in that arpeggio run. On the C7 I play the B bar dominant scale, the C, the B, the B flat. I run up that B flat major 7 arpeggio with our famous added 16 notes. This is also a G minor 9 chord extension. Ending on the 9th, playing down the C at 9 triad, using two approach notes to the 5th of the F major 7 in the 3rd bar. Adding a chromatic approach note to the A, again playing up the scale exercise arpeggio the A minor, which is an F major 9 extension, changing the rhythm to three triplets on the A, C and E, playing down the F at 9 triad, ending on the 9th of the F major 9. The third sample line. Using the arpeggio with the chromatic step in front of it. Adding a chromatic step to the arpeggio. Running up that G minor chord and going down again, adding the 13. 
Over the bar line, I'm still playing that G minor 9 chord and I add the 9 in the second bar. Chromatically surrounding the third of the C7, the E, again running up the C9 arpeggio with a chromatic step. Leading to the fifth of the F major, I'm going down the F arpeggio, adding the 9 with a chromatic step to the F major 9 chord, going up that scale pattern again ending on the 7th of the F major 7 with a little flip to the 9 and back. Transform your scale exercise into great jazz lines. When you look at scale exercises, please ask yourself this question. Am I going to use this exercise slash pattern in my playing? If the answer is yes, go ahead and practice. If the answer is no or you're doubting, ask again. Can I treat this exercise into something usable? No, don't practice the exercise, go to the next exercise. If you see something in the exercise and you're able to tweak it, do it and practice it. Use a rest, use a chromatic approach, those scale ones, extra scale notes to get this exercise to look like music and play it like music and add it to your playing and to your solos and your melodies. To help you in this process, I've made a PDF with normal scale exercises tweaked into great applicable playable and musical scale runs. When you play these exercises, you get the freedom to use these much faster into your playing and actually play great lines which sound good. Check the link in the description, 23 functional major scale exercises plus 46 examples. More great musical scale exercises. Stay tuned on this YouTube channel. Next up, this is how to play music while practicing your scales. Check the YouTube video right up. Up top, I was playing some phrases on the famous original by Miles Davis 4. Check my Patreon and my shop for the transcription. You want more? Go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter, share your questions in the comments below, then everybody can use the answers and the questions for getting further in their playing. All links mentioned in this video are available below in the description. Last thing there is to say, play music and have fun.